Hello everyone and welcome to my Duel Today official news channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Trip comes to the rescue in Everett's shrink session regarding Harris's memory issues. According to the Monday, February 26th spoilers for Days of Our Lives, Harris Michaels will be asked by Ray Fernandez what he recalls about the night he was tricked into going down to the loading dock outside the bistro. Stefan DiMera attempted to remove Harris at that point, but he was unsuccessful because Harris lived and is currently conscious. Will Ava Vitali sense that anything is wrong even though Stefan will continue to act like he's delighted for her? In any case, Day's spoilers indicate that Stefan's anxiousness will surge due to his concern that Harris would accuse him. Stefan will be relieved when Harris seems to lose all memory of what transpired. But Stefan will be aware that Harris might experience a flashback at any time, so he will worry about the matter and come under further lethal pressure from Clyde Weston later on in the week of February 26 to March 1st. According to teasers for other days, Bobby Stein's real name, Everett Lynch, will also be a patient at the hospital. Fans of DOL will see Everett in a gown as he undergoes testing in the wake of his recent collapse. Even though Stephanie Johnson is at a loss for words given the Bobby mayhem that has broken out, she will nonetheless express worry for Everett. Stephanie will be keenly monitoring their exchange as Marlena Evans, Deidre Hall, when she receives updates on the Bobby situation, will have some questions for Everett. Stephanie hopes to get some clarification on Everett's memory loss as she's still not positive he's speaking the truth. Everett genuinely seems to be unaware of any area of his life that involves Bobby, including his marriage to Jada Hunter, based on what viewers of Days have seen behind closed doors. Wendy Shin will have a panic attack in the enclosed tank and seek solace from Trip Johnson. Trip will save Wendy, so he'll assist her in calming her mind and slowing her breathing. Days of Our Lives spoilers state that Trip tries his hardest to support Wendy while she is in captivity and believes they will be able to escape this situation. Chanel went to the Horton flat to complete her move out and return one of Allie's extra keys. Chanel gave Allie a little irate greeting before revealing some anguish as she noticed some bags. The last of my things? Chanel spat, interpreting the scene as proof that Allie was eager to get their break over. Allie emphasized, that's actually my stuff I'm moving, to New Zealand, before providing Chanel with further information. When Chanel found out that Allie was leaving Salem that very night, she was shocked. Allie told Chanel, it's when Will and Sonny are traveling, and I wanted to go with them you know, so they can help me with Henry. She then brought up the fact that Henry had never taken a plane ride before, and that he was already with Will and Sonny at the Kiriakis estate. Chanel questioned Allie's decision to make such a significant alteration. It would be hard to see you every day at the bakery, so, yeah, it is probably best that we don't work together anymore but, Horton, not working in the same shop and living 8,000 miles apart are two very different things. Chanel quarreled. Allie attempted an answer, saying, I just assumed what, that I'd never want to see you again? Chanel made an educated guess. Chanel shrugged off the suspicion after Allie nodded to confirm it. I love you too much. Indeed, you have injured me, which is why I am unhappy, but I also know that I made the proper choice about us and our relationship. However, Horton, I will always and forever adore you. However, I don't want to get in the way of you if this is what you feel is best for you, Chanel said. I've made a mess of things here in Salem, so I think it's best if I make a go of it somewhere else, Ali said. Chanel emphasized, I'm going to miss the hell out of you, you're my best friend, and Allie agreed as they both wiped away a few tears. Allie interrupted Chanel as she was packing and about to say goodbye by pulling out a strip of pictures that had been printed at a photo booth in London years before. Before giving Chanel the picture strip, Allie said, look what I found while I was packing. Chanel exclaimed, some of the best days and nights of my life, and Allie concurred. Allie said, you should have this. They're yours, Chanel objected. With the hope that they would one day be able to reunite, Ali argued, no, they're ours our pictures, our memories, before tearing the strip in half and giving Chanel one of the pieces. Chanel began to say farewell once again after thanking Ali for the souvenir. You better send me postcards and let me know if you meet any koalas or kangaroos, Chanel pleaded. Ali clarified, that's Australia, but there are hobbits and kiwis in New Zealand. Once Allie was satisfied it was still okay, she gave Chanel a hug. 
After a while, Chanel withdrew and hurried out of the apartment while stifling new tears, and Ali sobbed as she remembered their romance. Alone at the Brady pub, Anna kept chatting to Kate Zern but got no response. Maybe if I use you like a magic eight ball? After pondering, Anna picked up the urn and gave it a shake. Will I get everything I want for my birthday this year? Anna pondered for a moment before turning the urn over and hoping to find the solution at the bottom. I guess it's only effective for the widower, Anna said in despair after realizing nothing had changed. After speaking to the urn for a little while longer, Anna realized that Paulina had eventually made her way into the pub. Wasn't that the most depressing funeral ever? Of course, all funerals are depressing, at least, the majority are, Anna stumbled. Paulina chimed in, I think you're trying to change the subject. You've got me, Anna mumbled. Paulina said, it sounded like you were talking to a dead woman when I walked in. Honestly, it's not the first conversation I've had with an urn, Anna said. Yes, it sounds like something I would have heard about. However, it sounded like the two of you were concerned about Roman and were hoping he made it to Statesville in time when Paulina overheard you talking to Kate about him. Lucas was having trouble understanding Roman's motivation for racing to Statesville in order to foil John and Steve's plan to kill Orpheus. This whole thing was your idea. Lucas prompted Roman to remember. Roman informed Lucas that Kate had recently added her thoughts to the situation. Roman emphasized, well, technically, her urn spoke to me, she didn't. Are you drunk? Lucas stammered. Roman took the chance to plead with Lucas to act drunk once more. Lucas insisted that the guard would not purchase the same ploy twice in one day, therefore Roman would have to come up with a different plan for getting inside the infirmary. Paulina had come into the pub just in time to hear nearly everything whispered to Kate's urn, Anna complained. Paulina sought to emphasize, I didn't mean to eavesdrop. It's just, it's okay, Kate was concerned about Lucas. She is apprehensive about his sobriety while incarcerated. There's a possibility that Roman could intervene to prevent Lucas from falling off the wagon, so she persuaded him to go there, Anna added. Well, I can't say that I blame her I don't think there will ever be a time that I do not worry about my kids or try to protect them, even from the great beyond, Paulina said, her expression slightly surprised. At that moment, Anna's phone rang. Paulina was even more perplexed when Anna reached for the urn. Your phone is in your purse, Paulina suggested. After answering, oh, right silly me, Anna moved aside to take the phone. Lucas said goodbye and hung up after giving Anna a brief update on Roman's quest to enter the infirmary. Paulina said, I have very keen ears, as soon as Anna came back. And what I do not get is, why would Roman try to save that piece of dirt Orpheus? Anna wriggled and Paulina went on. Paulina shrugged at Anna's comment, in my book, he'd be getting just what he deserves if they sent him to the afterlife, to where he would surely burn in hell. Roman had the same thoughts, but someone convinced him to change his mind, Anna told Paulina, looking toward the urn.